we're going to look at a pictorial look at negative feedback. So let's say that I have the following open loop amplifier and its associated feedback network. And I make the following connections. At the output, I'm going to connect in the following manner back to the feedback network. And at the input, I'm going to connect in this manner. Now, we can define feedback as series if to complete the circuit, We, can, we must go through both the feedback network and the open loop network. Here we can see at the input that in order to complete this circuit, we would have to go through the open loop amplifier and then through the feedback network to complete the circuit. And so we have a series connection at the input. At the output, we can see that in order to complete the circuit, we can either go through the open loop network or we can go through the feedback network. And so an, a network is shunt if to complete the circuit we can go through either network. Okay, so here we can see the output of this amplifier, we have a shunt connection. Now, we have a series shunt amplifier then. Remember, a series shunt amplifier would increase the impedance at the input and decrease the impedance at the output. This would be good for a voltage amplifier. The way that we're going to do the analysis is we're going to choose the right set of parameters based on the type of amplifier we see, in this case a voltage amplifier. And for a voltage amplifier, we know that we want H parameters. We're first going to use H11 and H22 to load the open loop circuit. These are approximations for what the feedback network does to the open loop circuit. We're going to find the open loop gain. And we'll do this through normal inspection analysis with the feedback circuit in place. And once we find the open loop gain, we're going to find H12, which is the feedback factor. And at that point, we have everything we need to find the closed loop gain of the circuit. A closed loop would be equal to the open loop gain divided by one plus the open loop gain times beta. We could further find input and output impedances by finding the input and output impedance of the open loop circuit and modifying them according to the type of connection at the input or the output. 
We'll solve an example in the next part of the lecture in order to demonstrate how this procedure is done.